Welcome to Microsoft Access. Uh, we're going to kind of pick up where we left off the discussion before. Uh, hopefully for most of you, you've been doing this in class and this is just a little bit of a review. But our first step, of course, is to open Microsoft Access. So I always find it just typing in Microsoft Access. I'm actually already here. Um, I actually have a number of databases that we've been creating in class, but we're going, for our purposes, we're going to create a new blank database. Um, so let's click on that. The first thing it's going to ask us to do down here in the bottom right corner is to give it a name. I'm going to call it the JSP Recruiters. Um, and it's also going to ask me where I want to save this. If I'm working on my computer at home, I'll probably use my documents. Um, and I do have one saved there. Although working at school, I probably want to save it to my network drive. So I'm going to save this one to network drive. Click OK, and I'm going to create it. Um, the default is it's going to give me this one table. Uh, eventually, we're going to add a couple different tables to this. In theory, we could have a ton of different tables. Uh, but I guess I'd call your attention to these, these different fields. All the columns in Microsoft Access are called fields. They're the type of data we want to store. And so, I guess just to get this started, we need to put in all of our different fields. So we needed um, client, oops, not client, client, client uh, number. And if I just hit enter, it'll jump over to the next field. So client number, client name. And I'm going to get all of this information uh, directly from uh, page AC41 in your textbook. That kind of lays it out fairly nice. Um, and again, this is th that client table. Remember, for JSP recruiters, uh, if you missed that part in class, JSP recruiters is a company that has clients and it has recruiters. The recruiters are basically the um, are basically the employees. So what I'm doing right now is creating a, a client page. This keeps track of all the um, companies that are. JSP's clients. Um, now paid. Oops, I misspelled that. So um, I can easily go back and edit that amount paid. Um, hit enter. Now I want to go back and add a new amount paid. I need current due. And um, I'm going to need a column for recruiter number. I'll come back and talk about that a little bit later. Um, so that's it. Th those are the fields that I need in my client table. Um, Microsoft Access will also default and give me this, this ID. Um, what they're going to set it to is, is the primary key for this table. I actually don't want that ID. Um, but I'm going to delete it. And you can understand why they would do it. It's going to assign for each each one of these rows is going to be a new record for a new client. So one of my clients is Alice Clinic. Um, and the client number, uh, as it's given in the book, is AC34. But you can see uh, it's going to automatically assign an ID number for me. Um, and I'm going to eventually get rid of that, that column. But I've gone through, I've created a field for all the different data that I need. And um, so at this point, I'm going to actually close my table, and that'll prompt me to save it. So I'll save it, and I'm going to call this my client table. Actually, I'm just going to call it client. Um, whoop, that's not the button I wanted. See, now I've got a client table. So let's reopen that. And now let's actually click on this design view. We can also get to the design view down in the bottom right corner. Um, and we can also choose a couple other different types of views, but we're really just going to be des develop, uh, dealing with the design view and the data sheet view. So let's go to design view. And here's where we can start talking about that primary key. Uh, if you remember from before, we need a unique identifier for each of these tables. And of course, in this table, the new unique identifier is going to be that client number. So I'm going to assign that the primary key. And notice it moved that little symbol. And then I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to delete 
that ID. So I just got rid of that field. So remember in our data sheet view, each of those columns is a field. Um, and I want to show one fairly important thing here. We changed our client number to the primary key. If I try to enter a record, you know, so my next one down is the Burroughs Hospital. If I try to add that and I try to leave this page, it's going to give me this index or primary key, key cannot contain a null value. And I guess I'd ask you to say, hey, what's in this box right now? And of course the answer is nothing. So that is that null value. And you can understand why um, Access would do it this way. They, you can't have a record that doesn't have an identifier. A unique identifier. So if you have this as your primary key, it's got to have information in there. Um, there is the possibility that if you were in your design view uh, and you didn't have client number selected as your primary key, I'm going to switch back to my data sheet view, that I could have started entering Benton Labs. So that's my third one. And now notice because it's not my primary key, it's not giving me that error message of the null value. But then if I go back to my design view and make it my primary key and then try to save this table, it's going to say, oh, it's a primary key has a null value. So I need to go and, and fix that um, and make sure that there is a value in here. So I did that by in my data sheet view, I changed it to no longer the primary key. Now I'm going to change it back to being the primary key. And I just have to make sure that anytime I'm in here, I always have a client number in there. All right. So we've created a table. Um, I'm going to go ahead and save it again. We, I've started entering a little bit of data. But now I want to go back to this data sheet view. Um, notice over here we have the data type. Now, for most of our data, it's going to be text. Our client number is AC34, so it's letters and, data, and numbers, so we want that as text. Client name is text. Street is numbers and, and text again, so we want it as text. City is a text. State is a text. Postal code is a number, so let's turn that to a number. Um, and I guess I want to call your attention at this point. Notice down here the default is that it's going to be an integer. That's going to come back to play uh, when we do our recruiter table in the next video. So we've got our number amount paid, of course, should be currency. So let's turn that to currency. Let's turn my current due into currency as well. And my recruiter number, again, is a number. And it is an integer, so we're fine leaving it as an integer. Now I'm going to close my client table. I'm going to yes, save the changes. Um, we changed some of the data, so it's going to give me this message that some data may be lost. Um, I'm not worried about that because the data that I would have in there is appropriate anyways. Um, so I'm going to click yes. We're good to go. And now I am safe to exit my program. So I will just simply click X and I don't have to worry, everything has been saved.